EJ. Hello. Thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. I know it's, it's a busy period. And just to put it out there, I know you said it, Ash, incoming CEO, but I don't think I'm going to get the chance to talk to a publicly listed CEO again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. But I want us to go way back um, where, where it all started. So tell us how you got to get to this place where you're the chief brand officer of Dr. Martins. <laughs> so if we want to go back to where it all started, um, <laughs> It probably starts with the Nigerian Civil War. Mm -hmm. Did anybody think that was where it started? Um, <laughs> um, so I, I was born in Pennsylvania, in the US, but I was born to um, young academics who were escaping the Nigerian Civil War. So as soon as the war was over, we moved back to Nigeria, and they'd been away. They didn't plan to be away, and so they didn't move back. They didn't want to move back to Lagos, the capital at the time, the commercial capital. They wanted to go back to see family in rural Nigeria. So I grew up in rural Nigeria. And I, I think I say that's where it started because this was a post war, this is a, a place where people are still recovering from war. Creativity wasn't a uh, choice. Mm -hmm. If you were going to eat today, if you were going to make it to school, if you wanted a toy, you had to be creative. You had to make your, your, your toy. And I, I've since realized that we don't have a word in my language, which is Igbo, for creativity. But the closest word we have for it, uh, doesn't isn't something you can say some people have or some people don't have. We all have it. And then it's about do we decide to use it. Mm -hmm. And so for me, this idea that we are all born creative became the thing that drove, that has driven my career. So I studied architecture. Uh, I graduated in the mid-90s. The internet was this new thing. It looked like a place where we could be creative. Um, that led me to uh, Wolfolins, which I think is one of the most creative um, companies in the world, which is where I really learned my trade and learned okay. from people. I became the CEO of Wolfolins. Um, from there, I went to Apple. So I spent um, six years at Apple. But for the last three years, uh, and I was in Apple retail, and when Dr. Martin's IPO'd and really mm -hmm. wanted to build out their direct-to-consumer channel, they asked me to join the board. Yep. Um, I kept complaining to the board that they needed a chief brand officer. And eventually they're like, can you stop saying that and do it? Great. And so three months ago, I joined as a chief brand officer. Awesome. So they didn't have a chief brand officer were, no, at all. I'm the first chief brand officer. Yeah. Amazing. And yeah. you've been in the role now for three months, right? I've been in the role for three months. And yes. how's it going? It's going well. I mean, the news last week was big, kind of like yeah. I'm trying to do my day job, and you guys are asking me to do something else in the future. <laughs> um, I mean, I love the place. It's a phenomenal place. So yes, it's, it's going really well. Uh, it's the best decision of my life. So two iconic, well, a couple of iconic brands that you might have worked with in your consultancy days, but Apple and Dr. Martens, both yeah. really iconic. But yeah. Dr. Martens specifically is has a rich heritage. Mm -hmm. um, it is a brand that I think we all agree sort of stands for rebelliousness, um, self-expression, individuality. And these really feel like values that I think are out for attack if we look mm -hmm. at, mm -hmm. if we think about the, you know, um, go woke, go broke narrative, if we think about how divisive the world really is right now. Um, and we think also about the pullbacks that are happening around diversity, equity, and inclusion. These values that Dr. Martin stand for feel like they're just open for attack. So how do you, how do you go about navigating that and leading the team in, in such a divisive world that we're living in? Yeah, it's a great question, and it's a difficult thing to navigate. Let's be clear about that. I think in Dr. Martin's, you kind of have no choice because the thing is founded on that. Like, what do you have yeah. if you don't do that, if you're in Dr. Martin? So this, this thing was founded in uh, 1st of April 1960, was really the first time the 1460 boot was made, and it, it immediately had a sort of a, a non-conformist attitude to it. But it's worth saying that what they did was make a great boot, mm -hmm. um, designed for comfort, designed for utility. There's a radical utilitarianism about it, which is why everybody can use it. But of course it is attractive, because it's not trying to be fashionable, it's attractive to those who don't want to conform. And so it's always been adopted by those radicals, those rebellious, those, the, the, the rebellious. But it's worth saying all of that is what the wearer does. What we do is make a great utilitarian piece of kit that isn't trying to keep up with the trends and that is attractive to the odd ones out. And that's a universal idea because uh, I suspect everybody here would agree, but everybody in the world has their moments of 
not feeling like you fit in, not feeling like you belong. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a brand that says, yeah, you don't fit in, and, but, but you belong, you, you're worth it, you can be you, and it forgives you for that. It doesn't just forgive you for that, it, it, it celebrates you for that. Um, so we can't get away from those, those values, There's just, yeah. that's just what our business is. But it's not something we, we put on a placard. Yeah. We know that our job on a day-to-day -day basis is to craft icons that defi defy the norms, and what the wearer does with it is up to the wearer. So it feels like what you're, tr what you're saying as well is that when brands sort of jump on the bandwagon of what is popular in culture <laughs> and yeah. in society, that's when they potentially can start to get into trouble? Yeah. So if Dr. Martens, because the punk movement adopted Dr. Martens, defines itself as a punk brand, it's dead. The brand will cease to exist. Like, it will be yeah. done in no time at all. And so it's really important that we don't get, we don't, the, the minute you move away from what you do mm -hmm. and start claiming credit for what the wearer, the customer, the buyer does, you, your brand becomes inauthentic. And in a category like ours, where we do make something unique, like the thing is, is anybody who has it on knows that they have it on, the minute you become inauthentic, you've lost that, you've lost that customer. And so we, we, we can't do that. So I know you're um, obsessive about the product. Yes. And we had a conversation a while back about that. And I'd just love you to share your perspective on why you're going back to really focusing the team on the product. Yeah. Um, because as marketers, we can, you know, get really caught up in the campaigns and the work and the stories that we want to tell. But I really just want to take a moment to pause and, and for you to just share with us this obsession that you have with craftsman craftsmanship yeah. and the product. Yeah. So let's talk about marketing for a second, and I hope yeah. this is not uncomfortable. Um, but two points to make. One is that the principles of marketing that we've developed over the last 30, 40, 50 years are largely military. We okay. take a position, we identify a target, and we run a campaign. That's military language. That's always been military language, and we've mm -hmm. adopted that. But it is, therefore, an us versus them language. Yeah. The language of a product is I'm making something that will delight you. Which, actually, the odd thing about that is that's a much lovelier marketing message. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and a much better marketing mentality to have. So that's, uh, that's the first thing to say. The second thing to say is, over the last, again, that same kind of time period, things that are generic have become branded. And if you make a generic thing that is the same as your competitor, the brand becomes the extra thing you've got to do to differentiate yourself. Because I don't know who's all in the audience, I'm not going to give examples. <laughs> but if you make something unique, what else are you going to talk about? Why would you talk about something else when you've made something that you really, really believe in? And uh, my previous guy, Apple, knows that really well. Like, yeah. you're not going to see an ad about how Apple is a great company. You're going to see an ad about why the iPhone is great. And yes, it's going to light that up in culture and tell stories around it, but it's about that watch saved my life and that phone takes a better picture. And the, the Mac is what the most creative people in the world work and You talk about the product. And so for me, if the marketing strategy is to talk about what's unique about the product, yeah. we better make sure that the product is awesome, because otherwise people will find us out. So yeah. it's a bit of a circular Absolutely. thing. I want to be proud about what we make, yeah. and as chief brand officer, I'm responsible for the product, so I want to make sure that product is awesome. And then the marketing job becomes really stripping back, stripping back, stripping back, until we're talking about the product. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Just, it's, it's a difficult time for Dr. Martins in terms of business performance. We all know that. Um, falling share prices, consecutive years of, um, you know, no profitability. But how do, you, how do you steer the team and lead the team when the marketing function is really responsible for driving that growth? Yeah. Um, so how do you go about navigating, you know, what is quite a challenging time at the moment in the business? Yeah. Uh, at the risk of... An, an we're in an audit period, so I'm not going to talk to you about numbers from last year. Um, but the first thing I would say is let's not let the press and the way stories are spun mm -hmm. talk about Dr. Martin's in crisis. This, this, you know, this brand is healthier than ever before. We monitor the strength of our brand. It's healthier than ever before, and it's, it's important to say that, not to be defensive about it. But the job of marketing absolutely is to drive growth. And it's exactly what I just said is my focus 
as the Chief Brand Officer is to make sure that we're stripping away from anything that gets in the way of the customer discovering the product. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have to say marketing does that. Marketing gets in the way because it wants to talk about trends, it wants to talk about stories, it wants to talk about things that are not the thing that the customer wants. And so our job as a marketing function of the year we're going into, which we've signaled is going to be a, a reset in the year, mm -hmm. that's, that's the signal we've made, we've got a new CEO coming in and all of that. Um, but our job is to strip away anything that's getting in the way of the customer dis discovering our product. And without going into details, that whether that's in our online journeys, in our physical stores, or just in our marketing messages, how do we make sure that this thing we make, and I, and I, and I am obsessive about it, this thing that we make is put front and center to the right customer and that they can discover it. And then it's their decision whether they pick it up or not. But if we're doing that mm -hmm. to enough people with the strength of this brand, we'll be absolutely fine. So also picking up on something we spoke about, which is resistance to change, yeah. and this focus on the product, and potentially doing things differently. Um, because when new people come in, they're bringing new ideas, right. they focus the team in a different way. Yeah. And a lot of what RISE is about is inclusive leadership. And can you just talk to us a little bit about how you're going to take the team on this journey and how you, how you deal with that tension yeah. and that resistance to change. Yeah. I mean, the f and you've been into Dr. Martins. The, the, one of the best things about Dr. Martins that it just hits you when you walk in is this is by far the most diverse organization I've ever worked in. It does hit you. It's, just, it's, it's, it's yeah. incredible. And diversity on all metrics. That's a superpower, right? Um, yeah. That superpower comes with um, tasks for leadership to be a place where every voice counts, right? And if we follow what I said earlier that um, our wearers are the rebellious self expressors well, you know what? Our, our employees are our wearers too. They all have this on. So there is that behavior that we've said, hey, we celebrate that in our customers, so we've got to celebrate it in our teams. But what's still important is that we focus that on what we're all here together to do. And there's nobody in Dr. Martin's who doesn't want to craft icons and define norms. Mm -hmm. So if we're focused on that, then we can have conversations and we can have debates. Because we're not a, uh, a, a trend follower, it's really great to have a diverse group of people. It's really great to have a, a lead designer who really knows what's happening on the back streets of Lagos, right? Or another one who comes from Curitiba and it's kind of like, here, is, here are some traditional making techniques out there that haven't made it. Like those kinds of yeah. things are a superpower. It does create tensions, <laughs> right? Um, but the behavior you've got to create is, and it's in, the, it's in the foundation of the company, the behavior you've got to make is that it's all progressive. It's about moving forward. We look back to the archive and to our history for what resonates mm -hmm. and what is relevant again, but not with nostalgia, yeah. always with a view of moving forward. And so the resistance to change is when we can hit directly mm -hmm. to say just because it's got us here is not what we're going to do next. Yeah. The, 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 the challenge and the task, I won't call it a challenge, the task is to make sure that as many voices as possible can participate in what next is. And when you make things, that's a really good advantage to have, that you have people who have different ideas of how things can be made. That's what keeps mm. the brand fresh. Yeah. We're almost, we want to give five minutes to the audience to ask EJ questions as well. Um, but before we do that, EJ, there is something about employee activism that I'd really love you to talk about as well. Um, post the social justice protests of 2020, employees have really spoken out, whether that's on political issues, social issues, climate issues, you know, ethics in the supply chain, for example. You know, employees really have a voice, and Dr. Martins has this incredibly diverse um, workforce, but is also kind of known for being quite an activist brand. And so how do you manage employee activism within Dr. Martins, um, and then also couple that with the brand's permission to really speak out on certain issues which I think there's also a tension around navigating that. So how, how do you manage that within the business? I think my short, my short line on that is you can't manage it. <laughs> <laughs> and you shouldn't set that up as your goal, to manage what people really believe in. Because if that's what they believe yeah. in, that's what they believe in. Um, but, but you can channel it. And you can, you, you, you can um, corral an organization around a mission that really matters. 
Um, in our case, and this won't surprise you that I'm going to say this, it goes back to how does that impact the things that we do and things we have permission to do. One of the things I've been most excited about in my two and a half months is a program called Rewear, which mm -hmm. is about, uh, which is circle economy product, um, where, uh, which is just, we've launched it in the US and it is gone way beyond any expectation we've had. And because our teams, and I, you know, I give credit to our teams, because our teams have said, we can't be part of the problem, we've got to be part of the solution. To begin to create that circle economy product, to, you know, teams go double into it, yeah. and then you put it out into the world, and of course it resonates with customers, because that too is a recognition of what our people do. Uh, as I said earlier, to really, you know, wanna, to, to really think how are we representing diverse cultures in the way we think about our products the way we think about the franchises that we're invested in over time, so that it isn't a monoculture brand that it's really brings those things together, I think is critical. So for us, it's about focusing on the thing we make. Yeah. Amazing. We have a couple of minutes left, and I'm going to throw it out to the audience to um, ask you some questions, if any. There's a roving mic. <laughs> if anybody's got any questions that you'd love to ask um, EJ about Dr. Martens. Anybody? You're not going to get this opportunity again, so don't be silent. There's a question here. Tell us about your shoes. About my shoes. What do you want to know? They are uh, 14XX. It's, um, it's, it's, what we, it's one of our more progressive um, boots. But what's really, what might not be noticeable, but the design team are really clear about this, it is actually based on the silhouette of the very original. It's called the 1460, but the first boot was made. It was made on 1st of April 1960, went to market. And the 14XX is a, is a future manifestation of that. Um, and it's, it's lightweight, it's comfortable, it's super comfortable, it's like walking on clouds, and um, we're excited about it. Yeah. yeah, you should, you should, yeah. We got a question. Internal employment opportunities. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Um, one of the things we are in the process of putting in place, and I can speak to that because it, 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 everything else predates me, is something called the Dr. Martin's Way. It's eight principles of how you grow in your career. Um, and it's really a sort of a community. You, you're supposed to do it in community. Because when you're in community, you begin to understand what different parts of the organization do, and you can find those opportunities to go, to, to, to go forward. So I'm quite excited about things like that, just because what often happens in any organization, Dr. Martin's, Apple, anywhere I've been, is that you get stuck in your, in your silo, right? Yeah. And your opportunities are limited to the opportunities your manager is aware of. And so this is a way to kind of get com conversations going across the organization. And I'm excited about how that will raise opportunities for people to see things they can do in other parts of the business. There's a question at table number four and six, two questions. And then we got a wrap. Just uh, going on your rewear product in the US, uh, some other brands are starting to do that more and more. Are you collaborating with others in like market brands and really drive that whole sort of market forward as well? Are you going to other brands? Yeah, um, and, and what's really exciting there is future materials. And so, for example, there's a, there's a product we have in the market in this country we call Gen X Napa, which is based on a recycled leather from a company that we're involved in, Coach are involved in, so a bunch of companies mm -hmm. coming together and you explore materials together. I think there's a long way to go, though. I really do think this should be an industry-wide thing, and it'll be interesting to see where we can all take it. Um, I'm going to say zero. I'm going to say it's my superpower. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say coming from, a, coming from where I've come from, um, partially because, you know, if you grew up in a, if you grew up in a post-war military dictatorship, office politics <laughs> is like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> so I think we all got to double click on what makes us unique and never, never appear as a victim in any, in any situation you find yourself. And that, that doesn't mean you're crude, that doesn't mean you lack humility. Um, but my, my background and where I've come from is my superpower. 
great way to end. Thank you.